Aynen. Morning. All right. We have so many announcements, you would swear it is Christmas. But just everything's happening literally pretty much within the next two weeks, which is kind of crazy. Uh, we have the yard sale coming up Saturday. So teens, keep that in mind because that's a work day for us to race for camp. Um, if you want to see Shirley about a table, at this point, you better have a pop-up tent because you're outside. Um, and I've already called dibs on ours because, well, we just signed up today for our table. Um, but there's going to be breakfast sandwiches now. There will be the hot dogs. So even if you're like, I do not need another thing cluttering my house, at least come for breakfast and lunch uh, to support uh, it's kids for the yard sale still, right? Or is we doing HVAC? Kids? Half and half. All right. So come for breakfast for kids in HVAC, lunch to support the teens, but then still buy something because it still helps do those things. Then the next day we got a wedding shower following service. The youth group that night is doing the back to school bash. Uh, we're going to have the water slide going. We're going to be doing a color war. We're going to have s'mores going and talk about Jesus. Then... It's not in your bulletin because we got it finalized like right after we printed the bulletin. August 14th, that Wednesday night, we have a band coming in. We are called uh, Pop Rock Christian Band, like the whole works. Uh, they are coming that night, 7 p.m., so invite everyone. But this is the big thing, and I'll remind a few of you guys to talk to you about this. I need eight people here at 11 o'clock that day to help unload the trailer as close to eight as possible. Um, I know a lot of you are in the same boat as I am. I'm working at that time frame, so I can't be here for that, but if you happen to have that day off and could be doing it, if you're like, oh, I can't really lift a lot, but you could lift a little and then bring somebody with you, then it might work together, but that just helps us get them set up uh, the whole thing is only costing a love offering, so spread the word. All the advertising will be going out today. Then on the 18th, that Sunday, we have our Awana missionary to start our Awana training. And then the rest of it, honestly, just read it because it's far enough out, but that's like the next two weeks. But to go with all this stuff, we have so many sign-ups. This is going to get confusing today. <laughs> I'm not even joking because of how much stuff. So, I don't have to hand out this one. Uh, we have a mission trip coming up. And by coming up, I mean it's next summer, but it takes us the whole year to fundraise for it. If that is something you are interested in, see Pastor Kim. There is only eight slots, so you actually have to uh, fill out a whole thing, and we have to decide whether or not it is a fit for you to go, who's the best fit. Uh, the plan is, if we can still work out with the missionaries, we're going to be going again next year because it already seems like we have enough interest that we're going to need a second team. So if you weren't picked this year, just presume that we can fit you on for next year. Anyway, sign up number one going around. This is for the potluck, for the wedding shower. Please put what you're putting so we all know what we can bring, so we don't have like 50 people all showing up bringing two liters of soda. It works out a lot better that way. Sign up number two. Oh, this one's double layered. All right, so you have on this the fall Bible study sign up. If you are planning to attend even some of those, uh, you need to sign up so Pastor Kim can get the books you guys need. And the other one is for the Awana training. Uh, this is to make sure we have enough food for the training days, but also so that if we need to do a background check on you, that we get that done as well. Uh, and I think that is everything with that. Oh, that's the last thing. Uh, in a couple weeks, we are going to be accepting some new members but we're also going to open up, uh, do another membership class. 
for anybody that's interested that we can also accept those into it. It is on the 25th that we are accepting members, right? Yes. Yeah, so on the 25th, we are accepting the new members that have already taken the class. So if you are interested, you got to talk to me or Kim so we can set up doing a class with you uh, so that we can accept as many as we can during that. Now I think we got everything. And I was supposed to have people handing out the offering while I was talking this whole time. That's what happens when we have way too many announcements. So, offering stewards, please come forward. <laughs> Let's pray, guys, as we take this offering and worship team can start coming up so they can read the scripture here. Uh, I just thank you that man, there is so much life in this church that need almost a half hour to do the announcements fast. God, I just pray for this offering that is we're trusting you uh, with our finances, trusting you to do just amazing things as we do life with less, that we just see this area transformed into your kingdom and your influence just spread through us to the whole world. Jesus, we pray this all in your blessed name. Amen. We have the scripture that we're going to read together today, and I forgot to write it down, so I'm going to step out here and read it with you guys. Let's stand and read the scripture together. <clears throat> Do we have it for the screen? There we go. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. There we go. Man, I think we are talking about family. So talking about reframing children is a blessing. Man, welcome to worship. Um, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Let's worship. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened prison doors, parted the raging of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Sing to the
the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. He won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise.
There's a new artist that came out with all kinds of good songs. And, and this one focused on the message today with Family Matters. We know that scripture talks about our house, right? The house of God and the house where we raise our families or we were raised. The song says, talks about identifying what our house is. A house of worship and praise where the enemy trembles. that you were when we read scripture, God, that nothing about you has changed, Lord. The way you moved then is the way you move now, God. As we submit our hearts to you, Lord, and let the power of your word be spoken into our lives. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kiddos, you are dismissed to head on downstairs. Before I jump into our message for today, I just want to pause this for a moment. There has been so much that has happened in the life of our church this week. Uh, we have family members who are grieving a very sudden loss. Um, keep the Glenn family in your prayers. 
Uh, we've been praying for Jake on our prayer list. He had passed away this week. Um, he's a young man, uh, late 20s or early 30s, so pray for them. I know there are many other situations that are happening because we've had a chance to talk and catch up. And this week, there are many situations weighing heavy on our hearts. So I just want to pause us for a moment and specifically take a minute and take them before the Father together as a community of believers. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are here with us. Lord, I thank you for the truths that we just sang with our worship team. Lord, I thank you for them leading us and bringing us to this place where our hearts are focused on you. Father, and as we come before you to hear your word, I pray that you would help us. Lord, help us through these situations we're walking through. Father, help this family that is grieving, that is mourning, that is asking why. Father, surround them with your love. I pray that you would give them the peace that could only come from you, Father. I pray that you would lift them up, that you would show them that your people are praying for them, that you are there with them, and that you will carry them through this. Father, I pray for all the other situations that are unnamed, but that so many of us are thinking about. Lord, we ask for you to step in. Father, we pray that you would help us to give these situations to you, that we would lay them down on the altar and we would say, Father, please have your way. I pray that you would lift the burden from us, that you would help us to surrender and to know that you are there, that you are working, that you will never leave us or forsake us. Father, I pray that as we go into your word, that you would speak to us, show us your truth. I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When I was a kid, back in the 90s, my kids think it's like the 19, like 30s, but it was the 1990s, um, I remember I would look forward to Friday night. Does anybody know what happened on TV on Friday night? TGIF, that's, <laughs> yes, TGIF. I wasn't, you know, a very old kid, but I knew when it was Friday, not only were we done with school for the week, which was exciting in and of itself, but it meant that my family was going to sit together in the living room and we were going to watch some TV together. Now, I know that's not like an earth-shattering thing, but I looked forward to this time with my family because during the week, we're a little bit busy, aren't we? We're running everywhere, doing everything. And Friday night, we would just, we knew. We would watch, what was it, Step by Step, Full House. Uh, the namesake of our sermon series, Family Matters. That was Urkel, right? Yes. He was my favorite. Um, I think maybe America's Funniest Home Videos. I mean, all these shows that would, would come on, even dinosaurs, they would have uh, different family situations. It was all about the family. There were different kinds of families. You had some where step by step, I think it was kind of like the Brady Bunch of the 90s where you had a lady who had kids got married to a man who already had kids, and it was about their family becoming a step family. So, of course, there are weird situations that I get into. Every now and then, there's a tough situation they have to walk through. Full house, the premise there was the mom had passed away, so the dad brought in his two best friends to help raise his family. In each situation, you were looking at a family who was in their own context dealing with everyday problems or I mean some really weird situations that we would never find ourselves in but were hilarious and what they did is within the span of 30 minutes whatever happened to cause the problem in the show by the end of the show it was fixed everybody was friends everybody was right with each other the hard conversation was had or the weird situation is over and they've gotten out of it. In any case, you had that 30 minutes where you saw this family live out their life. And for many of us, we kind of got the idea that this is what family life is like. That everything is pretty great most of the time. That disagreements don't last very long and that everything is solved pretty quick. But that's not how life is it, is it? how life is, is it? Sometimes it's not 30 minutes or the span of a couple days where the issues are settled. 
The spouses that are disagreeing about something don't always reconcile that quick. The situation that's taking place at school for the kids isn't solved in one or two days. Anytime that we have relationships, there's potential for there to be stress and strain because we're always growing and always changing. And so we're calling this series Family Matters because all of our relationships, we can kind of group them into different families. We've got the family that we're born into. That's what we're talking about today, parents and kids. We've got the family that we choose. That's our friends. The family that we create. That's husband and wife. The family that we worship with. That's our church. We're going to be talking all about these different kinds of relationships and what they should look like. Because sometimes what we think they should look like and what they should actually look like are a little bit different. Today, it's our first relationships. It's between parents and kids, or kids and parents, however the case may be, however you want to look at it. Those are our first relationships. You start bonding with your parents before you're even born. We're going to be looking in Ephesians. We're probably going to be looking at Ephesians a lot the next few weeks because there's a lot of teaching in there about different types of relationships. Paul is writing the letter to Ephesus, this church in Ephesus, and he's telling them a lot of different things. But one of his main points is that, y'all, we got to be on the same page. We have to be united. We have to make sure that we're seeking after the same thing which is God. And he specifically talks about how we do that in these different relationships. Today, we're going to be looking at parents and kids. And I know we're so excited about this. I see some faces down here like, oh no. I just want to read you a few verses. Ephesians 6, 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. All right, really simple. Our first point here is for the kids. Children, honor your parents. Now, before I see the eye rolls from this side, where it's my child... Um, I, do, I do know that this one can kind of be touchy, okay? I get that. I have talked with so many people um, throughout my years of ministry, which are a little more numerous than I want to mention. I have questions from teenagers. Well, what does it mean to obey my parents? What does that look like? What if we don't agree on the same things? And how does it compare to the average sitcom where... All we see is teenagers and parents fighting and disagreeing, and then the teens go wild, and that's kind of what we think it should look like, according to TV. I get questions from parents, adults, saying, well, what is my relationship to my aging parents? Am I still supposed to obey them? What does this all mean? And this is something that people have a lot of questions about. So this is one of the reasons why we're digging in. So children... Honor your parents. This one is tough because I have heard this one very much misquoted and very much used in the wrong context. This verse says, honor your parents. It says, obey your parents in the Lord and honor your parents, okay? If you look back in the Old Testament, this is one of the commandments. You're going to find this in Exodus 20, I believe, where it's given as part of the law, and then you're going to find it again in Deuteronomy chapter 5, where it's kind of the, a, a summary, a repeating of this is all the stuff that you really need to remember, so I'm going to say it again. And it says, honor your father and your mother. I've heard so many parents say, you just obey me. I'll see disagreements happen. Well, the Bible says you need to obey me. I've heard parents say, why won't my kids just obey me because it's in Scripture? Well, I think what we need to understand is obedience is just a small part of what it actually means to honor your parents. 
It says, honor your mother and your father. That's what's repeated in the Old Testament. And it's emphasized again here in the New. And obedience is added here to help us understand what it means to honor. Honor your parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your mother and your father, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. It makes sense when we read it. To bring honor to someone is so much more than being obedient, though. Listen, if you're a fan of Reddit or if you ever watch reels where people are talking about different situations, there's one that's called malicious compliance. Do you ever see those? So what it means is uh, usually it's somebody at work, and they have a very micromanaging boss, and they give them these rules they have to follow. And what the person figures out, well, if I follow these rules because they really want me to follow these rules, then it's not going to end up like they want. And they're like, got to follow the rules. So they comply with what they're supposed to do, but it's called malicious compliance because they're like, well, I'm just following the rules, even though I know it's going to be a train wreck. See, I can be obedient, but I can do it completely without honor. Like, listen, okay, have you ever had a child who doesn't want to eat their dinner? Our rule is you at least got to take a bite of something. But sometimes when I know they like the food, like I would make them eat it. So imagine you're sitting across the table from your child and you're like eating something like rice. And I don't want it, I don't want it. You will eat every grain of rice on your plate. So the child starts eating it one grain of rice at a time. I don't think we've ever done that, have we? I know, no ideas. The idea is, yeah, yeah I'm going to listen, but I'm going to do it in the most annoying way possible. Or I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it grudgingly. Like, that's not what we want from our kids. We want them to obey, but we don't want, we don't want them to obey like that. We actually want them to honor us. And part of that, yes, is obedience. But to honor someone is to reflect on them. It's to show, like, to give them esteem, to show them respect. When we honor somebody, we're showing them respect. The culture that this is written in, that, that the, especially the Old Testament and much of the New Testament, this was an honor-shame culture. Okay, we don't live in an honor-shame culture. We're pretty independent. Uh, we typically, we don't usually look at the way a kid lives and then we associate their choices and put that on the parents. Sometimes it happens, but most of the time, we've worked really hard to be like, no, I'm independent. What I do should have no effect on my parents or on my siblings. But back in this culture, I mean, it was honor, shame, and everything you did. The way that you acted would either bring honor or shame on your family. So if you went out and you were partying every weekend and you were wasting your money, that reflects very poorly on your parents. You were not honoring them. You were actually bringing them shame. And this had everything to do with status in the community, the respect other people would show you. Your actions really affected the way that your parents were respected and revered in the community. In other places in Scripture, it talks about well, you know, an elder in the church, well, they've got to have their own house in order before you can put them in charge of something else. We've got to see that they've got it under control in their home before they can even step into leadership in the church because what children do was directly related to how their parents were respected and understood in the community. Obedience is part of this. The way that we obey our parents reflects on how we honor them or if we do or don't. Now, before you ask questions, I did look this up. I looked at many people smarter than myself. I looked at words in scripture. And from the consensus, when it says children, we are talking specifically about kids who are living in the home with their parents. So the saying, my house, my rules, is pretty much what we're talking about here. Children, obey your parents. But scripture also says, obey your parents in the Lord. This isn't a blind obedience. This isn't you do what your parents say no matter what. This is obey your parents in the Lord. 
This is assuming that he's talking to the people in the church. This is assuming that the parents that you're living with are also in the church, that they're also seeking God, that they're also in the Lord. So if your parent tells you to go and rob a convenience store, no, don't do that. That is, that is not something God is going to tell you to do. That is not something that would be in the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. It can also mean obey your parents because you are in the Lord. The reason we bring honor to our parents is because they should be bringing us up in a way that brings honor to God. And by bringing honor to God, we are naturally going to bring honor to our parents. Our next point, which we're not going to get to yet, but it's about parents raising your kids in the Lord. This is presupposing that these parents that are are raising you, that we're saying be obedient to, that these are godly people, that these are people who are serving God actively. And so the way that they are raising you is flowing out of their relationship with God. Little kids, we expect them. They need to be obedient to their parents. We need to train that up, right? Little kids, I mean, we don't want them running around and hitting and biting other people. That's just common sense. We tell them to obey their parents. Don't bite people. Don't hit people. But as kids get older, as they start to think about what am I doing and why am I doing it, the reason we're doing it is to bring honor to our parents. To bring honor to God by honoring our parents. This is a tough concept because none of us here likes to be told to be obedient to anybody or anything. I know that. But scripture teaches us we're supposed to obey our parents unless it is something that is directly contrary to scripture. Because this brings them honor and this brings honor to God. Are you tracking with me? Are you liking it at all? Yeah, there's no head shakes there. Okay, so think of it this way. Did you ever see an old movie projector where they would get the big canisters of film and you'd have to load it in? And so there's the film. Um, it, it makes this really cool sound. It's like when it goes through and it projects it up on the screen. Okay, so if you look at these, like if you would take them out of their canister and look, you would just see little individual pictures. Because that's how they made the movie. It's just a whole bunch of pictures taken really fast. So what the projector does is it runs it through the projector system really fast. It projects it on the screen so it looks like it's a constant motion. So we can take a look at these little pictures. One person could look at a time. You could hold them up. But what happens is... That one little picture is then projected on the screen for everybody to see. So the way that we act, we're that one little picture, is projected for everybody else to see. And the way that we choose to live, the actions that we choose to take, are very visible to everybody else. So kids, children, any age child, okay, We are supposed to live in a way that brings honor to our parents. That doesn't end. There's no age at which we don't need to honor our parents because we should always be living in a way that brings God honor, which in turn will bring our parents honor. That's a tough one sometimes. Relationships are complicated. And sometimes we don't like to do what our parents want us to do, like take out the trash or empty the dishwasher or things like this. But if it's something that's not against Scripture, we need to respect them. Adults, we should always be seeking to honor our parents. And the best way we can do that is by honoring God. Okay, now we're at the parent part. Parents... Teach your children. Very short and very sweet. But I love the word that they use in this verse. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Don't exasperate them. Instead, 
bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. It should not go hand in hand. We should not make the training and instruction of the Lord exasperating. Okay, do, do y'all know what exasperating means? Okay, have y'all ever been exasperated? Uh-huh, you're just done. Somebody has driven you nuts. They have given you way too much to do. You, it, it's just a mess. He says, parents. He says fathers here, but that's the way of saying parents. Don't exasperate your kids. Don't load them up with so much stuff that they have to do that they become to the point where they just don't want to listen to you anymore. He says, but instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Okay, this is already presupposing that the parents who have children that he's writing to, that they are in the Lord, that they are in church. And what he's saying is, if you are a parent and you are in church, your job is to bring your children up in the training and in the instruction of God. That is your job. Make sure we teach them. We live in a time where much of the training of our children has been outsourced. Now, some of it's really good. Like, we send our kids to school so that they can be taught to read and write and do all kinds of stuff. Because sometimes our personalities just butt heads. Did y'all learn during COVID that we're not teachers of our own children? I can teach other children, but it was not working with my own. So that's great. I love that we have a system where we can send our children to school and they can learn. But we've kind of come to the same point in our churches. We've outsourced the religious training. And we, we say, well, that's what uh, youth ministry is for. That's what children's ministry is for. That's why we go to church. But if you stop and you, you think about it, how many hours a week do we get your kids? Maybe if they came to Sunday school and church and midweek, we might get in between about three hours, give or take. A youth group, you get two hours. I know one hour is straight up game, so we're going to count it as one. Um, and you come to church. And we do things with them, but we only get them for a handful of hours. This is not where the main instruction of our families is to come from. That's supposed to be supplemental. That's supposed to be something added onto what we are teaching them at home. To bring your child up in the training and the instruction of God, it has to be something that we understand is our primary role as parents. If we want our children to live a Christian life, if we want them to have our morals and our values, if we want them to understand what is required of them from Scripture, we have to own this role. This is not something that they're going to learn for one or two or three hours a week at church. This is something that they will learn and develop in the home. They need to see this happen. We have to model this for them. Little kids learn through modeling. As they get a little older, then you, you maybe do it with them. So when they're little, maybe you say prayers with them at bedtime, and, and you, you might teach them what to say, but they're praying your prayers after you. And as they get a little older, maybe you pray with them together. You do a little bit, they do a little bit. And then eventually they'll get old enough where they understand how we pray so then they can do it on their own but if we just tell them okay go to bed say your prayers and we never teach them how to do it or model it for them then that's not something they're going to learn how to do if we want to have children who are living a godly life we have to model it for them in the home we have to intentionally teach them what to do why we do it how we do it but many of us have just kind of said, I don't have time. That's what church is for. But parents, don't exasperate your kids. Bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Think about the Pharisees in Scripture. You know, Jesus calls the Pharisees out. Pharisees are some of the people that were supposed to be, you know, the best of the best. The people who were living out scripture to a T. And Jesus calls them out and says, listen, you're, you will tie the tiniest part of your income from your herb garden. But you over here looking for loopholes to leave your um, aging widow mother to survive on her own. To live off charity. He says, you missed the point. He says, you guys are loading the people down with rules and you're not lifting a finger to help them. He directly calls them out for this. He says, 
don't just load them up with all these things that you're supposed to do and then not lift a finger to help them, but show them how to do it. Walk with them. This is a discipleship relationship. Yes, they are your children, but we are supposed to disciple them. That means we teach them, we train them, we show them, we walk through things with them. We let them see us doing our devotions. We let them see us reading scripture because it is a priority. If we tell our kids, read your Bible, but they never see us doing it, but we don't carve out that time during the day, we don't even buy them the tools to do it, then why would we think that that's going to be important for them? That's not training them up in the ways of God. This is a very important role for us to understand. As parents teach your children. I love that I get to say this. When I was working in kindergarten, <laughs> I haven't gone back this year, one of the things that we would teach the kids was uh, addition and subtraction. Y'all, I did not know we taught that in kindergarten until I got to that phase of my first kindergarten year. And so we teach the kids how to do addition, and most of them, they can do it. This is in the, you know, spring of the year. But when we get to subtraction, like, it's just mind-blown. Like, it is so hard for them to do. It is such a hard concept. So we can't just tell them, okay, take two away from five. What do you get? They're going to be like, what? What is this takeaway thing? Why is there a line? What are you, like, and there's so many questions. So what we have to do is we use... We used like little toys. We had like little bears, counting bears or blocks. Or sometimes I would be the cool teacher and let them draw on my table. And I'd like draw a picture of like a bug. And I'm like, okay, now you squish the bug and like wipe it away. And we'd have to show them. We'd use our hands. Okay, you have five apples. And we, we lost two of them. And I said, take two away. One, two. And we showed them how to do it, right? Or we'd move the objects on our table. And some kids really struggled with this. So we would do this day in and day out. This would take weeks sometime. Once they got it, they could go and do it on their own. Once they understood the concept, man, you could not stop them. You had to give them harder and harder problems. We were only supposed to really teach them between 0 and 10. Once these babies caught on, they would be doing up to 20 and 30, some of them. But at first, it was really hard, and we had to just slow down, walk it through with them, show them again and again and again and again. But once it's stuck, it's stuck, it'll stick for the rest of their lives. When we slow down and we realize that bringing our children up in faith, that is our primary job as a parent, to take care of them falls under bringing them up in faith because we're going to care for them spiritually as well as physically and mentally and emotionally. We need to slow down and sometimes we have to show them again and again and again. And when they see, when they get it, when they understand, then that is what is going to stick with them for life. Sometimes I hear uh, the proverb, train up a child in the ways of the Lord and they won't stray or they won't walk away. I don't remember the exact translation. Um, they will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's Proverbs 22, 6. Train them up. Don't just tell them what to do. Don't exasperate them by throwing all these rules and commandments on them and, and just thinking they're going to figure it out on their own. But train them up. Show them. This is not an every case scenario. This is not a, if you do this, then they, there's no chance for them to ever walk away. Because we all know, we all know that sometimes even from the godliest home with the best teaching, we are all responsible for our own decisions. But what this is saying for a majority of people, if we slow down and we take the time and we own the responsibility to really and truly train them up and to disciple them and to show them how to live their faith, they have such a better chance of staying in the faith the rest of their life. We are called to be disciple makers. We are called to be the people who are cheering them on and who are helping them learn and grow. 
we got to teach them. And let me tell you, if we don't teach them, this world will teach them. And it will teach them something that we never wanted them to learn in the first place. Parents, teach your kids. Kids, obey. Kids, honor your parents. Now, see, this last point, I kind of boil it down. Everybody submit to God. And this is the key. The parents who are raising up their kids and we're teaching them, we're doing it because we are being obedient to God. Because we are following the plan that he has laid out. Because we are raising up disciples. We are going and making disciples in our own family. We are teaching them. We are training them up. That is us being obedient to God. That is us submitting to God. And the kids, when we honor our parents, it's because we are submitting to God. See, what this all comes back to is it's not about this power thing. It's not about obey me just because I'm your parent, all that. It's because of our relationship with God. So parents, we set the tone. Our relationship with God is what we need to reflect in our relationship with our kids. Our submission to God is why we teach our children to submit to God. The way that we submit to God is the way that we're raising them to submit to us as we submit to Do you remember, remember when Paul says, imitate me as I imitate him? That's how we need to be submitting to God. Say, God, I, I, I'm following after you. And the way that we're raising our kids is we're saying, listen, I know it's hard to follow God, but if you follow me as I follow him, we're going to get this. It is about us all submitting to God. Um, do you ever watch like AGT or something where you see these people will come on and they'll do like this balancing act? I don't know why. I don't know whose idea this ever was, but they put like a round, it's, it's like a tube on the stage, and then they put a board on top of it, and they stand on it, and they like balance. You ever see people do that? Okay, somebody has. I am not nuts. <laughs> okay, well, people do this. If you did not know, people do this. I don't know why. I mean, I, as a child, I was never tempted to try to balance this way, and they'll do crazy acts, and they'll have people balance on them, and so what I was thinking of um, to explain this is, is you've got this almost like a balance beam. There's, there's a little fulcrum in the middle, and you've got the, like a board going across it. You've got parents and kids, right? And it's a balancing act. Okay, we have to work with each other. We're, we're meant to be a team. Parents, we're cheering on our kids. We want our kids to succeed and do well. And kids, we want, we want to honor our parents. At the core of things, we want to have a good relationship with them. We want to honor them. And it's this act. It's a balancing act. Sometimes we get out of balance. Sometimes it happens. Did y'all ever fight with your parents? Yeah, okay. My parents are watching. They know that I have fought with them, okay? We get out of balance. But the key is that we get recentered on God. It's not to say that we're always going to have a perfect relationship. And parents, if you teach your kids exactly perfectly everything you should teach them, sometimes your kids are still going to get out of balance. And kids, even when you try to be obedient and when you try to honor your parents, and if it's something, maybe your parents want you to honor them in a different way, but you're seeking after God, and maybe they don't line up, sometimes we can get out of balance. But the whole thing is, if we are looking to God, he's going to bring us back in balance. It's only through mutual submission to the Father that we can really have one of these thriving relationships. And I mean, listen, that can be any relationship you have. Spoiler alert for the rest of our series. But sometimes it's really hard between parents and kids. I know this. Again, my mom's back there shaking her head in Pennsylvania as she watches this. I was rough, okay? But we get back in balance when we take our eyes off each other and look to God. Parents, when you've had kids who have walked away, who did you turn to to bring them back to the faith? God. It was only God who could bring them back. It's a tough relationship to have. 
It's a tough thing to navigate. And this is one of the most complicated relationships we can have because our families are messy. But if we kind of step back and we take a look at Scripture and we both submit to God, then He's going to bring it back the way it needs to be. And it's going to be give and take on both sides, but we'll get there. Perfect timing, children. I don't know how your relationships with your parents are. Maybe they're in a terrible place. Maybe they're an amazing place. But we're doing communion this morning. It's, again, um, it's the first Sunday of each month, and we're, we're trying to make communion a priority. We believe that as the family of God, it's a privilege for us to come and celebrate the Lord's Supper. Not only did he command us to do this, but he invites us to come and commune with him. So if you are a believer, you believe in Jesus, we invite you to take communion. But today, I thought that maybe we could come down and maybe parents and kids, maybe you come and take together. Maybe you come as a family and you commune with the Father together. Now, I know sometimes maybe our family's not here. That's okay. I'll take communion with you. We're all a family here. But if you've got your children present, I think it would be very meaningful if we came down and we took together with them. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. He said, this is my blood that is poured out for you. Take it and drink in remembrance of me. And he tells us to do this when we fellowship together, to remember the sacrifice, to remember what he did for us. It is our great privilege to be able to celebrate communion with our good Father. Take a moment. Talk to God. If you've got something you need to work out in yourself or in your relationships, just ask Him to show you. Take a moment, and when you feel ready, come on down with your families if they're here. Take communion together. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for for the beautiful relationships you give us. Father, I thank you. I thank you that we can celebrate you as our good, good Father. Lord, you show us you love. You show us. Father, that if there is a fight between parents and children, the resolution, and I pray it would be because there is submission to you. Lord, you call us to live a life that honors you above all else, and I pray that you would help us to navigate that. Lord, I pray that you would show us how to honor our parents, and I pray that you would show us what it means for us to teach and to raise up the children you have given us, whether they're our children or the children we've picked up along the way. Father, I pray that you would just move as we come before you and we take communion. Father, may we sit to heaven. I pray that you would just lead us and guide us in all things. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come up and help you. Maybe you're ready or stand in worship. As long as you follow the Lord this morning.